at the end of the last episode for the propellers, it was a two-part episode, I, uh, I intentionally mentioned that I was going to be doing this episode because I needed extra motivation to get it done. I was so burnt out and tired from fuselage frame segments that uh, I've kind of been allowing myself to be distracted by some of the other stuff that needs to get done and not doing the last little bit of tedious work that needs to be done to get these over for heat treatment. So that's what this episode is about, ending my procrastination. And I'll kind of show you, run you through what I've got to do with these. They're, the parts are formed, everything's done with them uh, in terms of taking the shape that they need to be. Um, but with the amount of production that I was doing, I didn't necessarily go through and deburr them all properly or uh, any of that good stuff. So I'll go and I'll check that. I'll look for anything that I might have missed on them in terms of little marks or, or things that would be much easier to take care of now while the components are still soft as opposed to post heat treatment. So frame JK is one of the easier ones to do. It's at the back of the aircraft. It was actually one of the last frames I did um, out of both sets. I, I hadn't finished this for our set and then I built the set for the Jet Age Museum and then I came back to it and had to build frame JK. So I think that was actually one of the frames that I was working on in the early videos showing you guys shrinking and stretching. Uh, but anyway, uh, I, pulled the, um, I pulled the vinyl off of it and uh, now it's still, this is the markings that come from the mill to identify the material and the specifications that it meet, the material thickness and things like that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, I've just got some gun wash on a rag and it comes off fairly well. You have to be careful putting uh, the ink side out on repairs because it, the ink, if you leave it there, it'll actually bleed through the primer and you'll be able to see it. So that's just a little cleany process that I'm going to go through with this one. Get rid of all of that stuff. It's not good to have it on there when it goes into the furnace for heat treatment. So this is the uh, the top portion of frame JK, and this is the bottom portion of frame JK. So same thing, all sorts of excitement, cleaning parts. I'm sure, you guys are all enthralled. Uh, but that's just the first step. I've got uh, every frame's got its own paperwork, and then it's got additional worksheets for every step of work that's performed to the part. Now these parts. Um, like I say, there's not too much on JK, so it's a really good starting point. Ease back into it pretty slowly. Uh, you'll recall that there's that extra inch of material, so uh, that's the middle of a stringer cutout. Nothing's too well uh, finished in there, and I'm not going to go any farther than that. You can see maybe just where the router was. I was doing it fairly quickly. You can see that there's a little wave there. Um, it's not an issue right now. It's going to go through heat treatment like that. These, ex the extra material that I leave there, I've already trimmed it down pretty well. Some of them are longer, uh, like the top segment. You can see that there's a little bit more. I'll probably trim that down more, but I'm not going to finish these edges. It takes a lot of time and I don't expect a lot of issues, but should anything happen to any of these segments and I have to scrap them after heat treatment because of warping or twisting or something that happens during that process, um, I haven't wasted too much time cleaning those up. And when they go in uh, and get fitted here, everything's going to have to be identified and drawn true, and I'll do all my finishing at that time. So at that point, I'll know that I have a good part, and we're just proceeding, um, assuming that I don't mess one of them up. <laughs> So the ink's been removed, we've got some marks on them, and uh, I've retrieved the form block. So using the top piece as an example, it, uh, I, I just want to verify that I didn't get frustrated and put something back that I'm not really happy with. So I, I just kind of have a second look. Form blocks are really easy to do that with. You can see that the whole tooling holes line up. You can also see that I didn't cut, uh, or stabilize that, or you're going to think I'm a quack. Um, I didn't cut corners. It's sitting quite nicely on there. So, um, so I think that's pretty good. I do feel a couple bumps in here. So now that I know how that sits, how the holes line up uh, correctly, I'm going to go and I'm going to run this through the bead roller just to see if I can smooth that out a little bit. But if you remember back to the stretching video, the bead roller has potential to stretch that flange if I do it a little bit too hard or too many too many times through there, it'll actually compress it, stretch it, and we'll end up with a part that wants to rock like that when you put it on the form block. And um, in reworking that, 
if I go to shrink something and I shrink it too much, it'll actually, um, where am I here? <laughs> it'll actually want it, this to spread out. So the holes won't align anymore. So there's a couple little checks and balances in there. If you are gonna do a little bit of rework, make sure that you have some way to verify that you're getting the contour back to the way that it was supposed to be. So over the bead roller, I'll run that through and I think I'll trim these guys off. So it's just in the middle here. And what the issue is, is um, because of the, the radius here getting tighter and tighter, when I use the shrinking jaws on it, the shrinking jaws are flat. So having a tight radius like that with a flat jaw pressing in it leaves little shoulder marks from the jaws. So um, I obviously worked them out, but I'm, I'm not quite happy with it. So I'll just give it a little run through here. So I'm using steel dies. Uh, as you can see, this slides through it with no movement of the rollers. So there's no pressure on there right now. The steel dies make it even more dangerous uh, if you're doing this, it makes it more possible or a better chance of stretching the metal if you put too much pressure on it. So I also find that the nylon dies, they, they have a little bit too much flex to planish, which is what we're doing here, um, planish the material back the way it should be. So I prefer to go very carefully with a set of steel dies. And I've selected this one here. I think I modified it for something else, but I've got a nice shoulder on it here. Just in case I get too close to the inside radius, I don't want to damage the part or scrap the part by having a line or a stress riser pushed in there by these rollers, not at this point. <laughs> so just a little bit of pressure. So I've got it just till it stops and I'll run that through. little bit more see the thing is though if I stretch this those marks were caused from the shrinker and my only <laughs> way to fix the stretch would be to shrink it so I definitely don't want to overstretch so I think that's all I'm gonna to do to that one that helped uh, I can always planish it a little bit with a dolly as well a dolly and a hammer and get there's one little one there, I think I probably will. So. so same premise here. This dolly just has a nice little crown to it. Um, and it's similar, but a little bit of a tighter radius than this one. So I'm able to really select where I'm going. I'm gonna hold it very close to the head. I don't need this as a lever. I just need two hard surfaces to knock some of these little, little tiny high spots down. And again, it's really easy to just not do this, but it's going to be a lot harder later once this comes back and it's age hardened. So something to be aware of too is this isn't, it's got a small radius on it, but you really want to watch that you're not tapping it into the radius, inside radius here, because again, you put a stress riser in there and there's not a lot of uh, coming back from that. So this is essentially planishing, which is removing smaller dents and imperfections. Doesn't take a great amount of force. Just uh, want to make sure you're tapping it in the right spots. So just that little bit, that feels a lot better. As you can see, the, the little bit of mess from the hammer marks there, again, it's just, it's almost a, just a cosmetic thing. Um, and it's not just for me, but people see the parts that uh, come out of Typhoon Legacy and I don't want them looking um, like they just got beaten up. <laughs> So there you go, That's, uh, I'm quite happy with that. We'll send that off in that condition for heat treatment and we'll finish it up even further when it gets back um, post reshaping after it's been quenched and we go to fit it into the uh, fixture. Woohoo! So this um, mess <laughs> is uh, JK. I just finished them up. Everything's verified for the top, bottom, and both side segments. Sitting nice and true. Any little imperfections are scuffed out. The ink's all cleaned off. 
And now I'm moving on to frame J. When I put a tooling hole in through the part and then in through that station plate, they should slide right in. Everything should fit beautifully. And these ones are tight, so I don't like that. And what it is is that it's um, stretching on these flanges, so it could have used a little bit more stretch. Now, that can be done or resolved in two ways. It can be resolved in running it through the bead roller, which I think I might do. I'll run it through once, I'll test it, and if that doesn't work, Right here on the uh, all the stringer locations, a little bit of shrink will bring it back as well. And then, of course, doing that, I'll have to uh, bring it back to its form lock and make sure it sits properly on there as well as the tooling holes. Because tooling holes are great, but you ultimately you want the outside of the fuselage to be fair and true all the way around. So. Okay, so that's very, very close. Still, it would take a bit of effort or manipulation to get that in there, so I don't like that. But uh, I think now, for the next step, I'm going to take it over to the shrinking jaws. Incredibly light pressure on this. This is a very, very small adjustment. It's not an actual forming process. And then a trial fit. That guy's good. That's nice. I do like that. A little bit tight maybe. But I think yeah, there's still a little bit of pressure on that. I'm quite happy with it. So, now uh, the next step is to verify what I've done. It hasn't changed the overall geometry of the part. Uh, very important. <laughs> that's what, uh, that's the outside of the Typhoon. So uh, I'm gonna have to climb up and grab the form blocks for this guy. And we'll lay them down in place and make sure that everything's true or rework as required. Our form is good now. Um, I'm going to go back one more time and uh, fit this to the uh, fixture and then carry on as if I were normal and um, fit it uh, or uh, do some trimming and uh, clean that edge up, all the, the normal stuff. Okay, so uh, we're back with frame H. Same thing, exact same thing, <laughs> over and over. So I'll go through and I'll do the same steps. I'm gonna do some trimming, I'm gonna do some scuffing, I'm gonna do some verification on this guy, a little bit of paperwork, and uh, we'll uh, finish up with H and move on to, uh, what, G? So that's that for the uh, fuselage frame segments. They're all cleaned up and prepped, as you can see from the pile behind me. And uh, I've put some tags on frame A. These are just made with uh, the Rotex punch. 
but everything's stamped and identified and good to go for heat, heat treatment. So uh, we'll get these off and uh, hopefully get that done soon and do an episode if we're allowed to, to show you exactly what happens with the next step of the process before we get them back for uh, actual fitting and assembly. So thanks for watching guys. Next time, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do for the episode, but uh, I'll keep you on your toes and let you guess. <laughs> Take care. Cheers.